well, uh, my introduction is very short because I'm not well known within this community. Well, I mean, like other speakers that have given presentations before. But some of you may know me because I visit as many councils, I attend as many councils as possible. I am also an active participant. I participate actively on the distribution list. Often people start the presentation with an overview of the presentation and telling you what the talk is about. But I will start the other way around. I will tell you what not my talk is about. Well, it's Handware hacking. Well, a wise person told me once that there are two type of story, no, two type of talks that you can give. One is a technical one, and the other one is a talk, a talk about telling stories. So today I will not be talking about extreme hacking. I will not be showing any zero days that I found on any technologies. I'm not going to show proof anything which is highly technical and that's the point of it you know because well you know it all already and I'm not going to tell you about new exploitation techniques my talk is not about big either either or cloud or cyber anything well perhaps I will be losing some points who knows by doing so but anyway yesterday this I this came to my mind yesterday as I was having lunch. So by the time you will publish videos, or by the time you play your playlist, and every time you uh, hear the video, uh, so the word cyber, you just have a drink, and then you will be very soon drunk. Okay, when you yeah, play back the videos of this talk. Oh, sorry, conference. Okay, what is my talk about? Well, well, to put it in a nutshell, accessing kiosks, vending machines, vending machines that sell tickets, mm, ATMs as well. Well, few of them, okay, we are highly interested in ATMs, okay, even if they are not very easy. Also, obtaining access to any computer, any computer, any equipment that you come across with within the street, uh, information kiosk, or at, at the end of the day, a computer embedded in any kind of box. So that's always our objective, or the objective. And rather than how I did it, so, the hardcore techniques, very complex techniques that I will be using are quite uh, ridicule, you know, are quite ridicule. So, I'm not going to focus on the how, but on the meaning of them. What I was, what called my attention of these devices is not that they are everywhere, but that at the end of the day, there is an equipment behind it. It is there, it is there out there for me, waiting for me, whether it is touch screen, keyboard or whatever. It is having a computer in just in the middle of the street. Then challenge. Well sometimes when you click on the print link, that's it. However others were more elaborated and they required some more craft, so to speak. And also very important, as I told you before, where are these devices located? Sometimes they are part of a network and they are connected to other equipment. And that was uh, another reason that took me to do so. For 11 ye months, I lived in a company that had a very poor connection with airports and I spent hours and hours on that airport waiting like this man on the uh, video and I spent hours and hours on airports and then for that I set myself a few rules well at the end of the day it's good to limit things so narrow down things a bit 
I was also appealed by the fact of using my hands. Well, it's not a question if I have an explorer open up iCAT. Are you aware of iCAT? It's a tool that it was aimed to do what I'm going to show you, that is to say, to use it on kiosk with internet access. It triggers a number of URIs, also Firefox extensions. Well, it is a really cool tool. And well, the thing is that you cannot access there from all these uh, type of devices, and at the end, it was not as interesting. It lost interest. OK, another of my rules were to leave everything as I found it. It is not good for me to crash a kiosk with a 40-inch screen that I find at an airport. And then, you know, and then just to mm, crash the desktop and the screen, and that's not the point. Eh? And last rule was aimed, of course, on achieving what I wanted to achieve, that was to open or tame a CMD, or at least to bypass the functions of the device. For instance, if it is a kiosk at the airport that charge you f to log on the internet, they may have some uh, caps, capping on them, you know, for you to access some ports, etc. How to do all that? These are the approaches that I followed for. In terms of inputs, well, at the end of my presentation, I'll ask you for some help because I'm also interested in doing or testing the other things. Well, but most of the cases, inputs are a keyboard or a mouse or a metallic ball that performs as a mouse, touch screen, and then techniques. I just name them myself. Well, for instance, race condition. Race conditions for those of you who are not aware of it, this is not a highly technical stuff. Race condition is taking advantage of a timing between an action and the reaction of the device. So, for instance, equipment where you were uh, Safety screen is triggered. When the safety screen triggers, you go and say, hmm, this is different, and then you are appealed by that. The other one is crash. I have an application, full screen, which is often the case. At the end of the day, you cannot escape the screen. And then within the application, you find a way to crash the application, to shut itself uh, down, and that's it. Then these other techniques, since I like the name, touch touchy. I think this is the first kiosk that I broke because I broke it. So it is on the little corners of the screen you do like this, you walk around because screens are poorly calibrated. Sometimes you think that you're getting the full screen, but you aren't. And then you do like this, and the rest of the window, you eliminate the application, and that's it. You have the full screen. And as I say, there are many mistakes out there. OK, so you look around, and you always find some mistakes or errors or flaws. Right, now, URIs, they look like this. They are referred to as external applications, same as the well, FTP is one of the most common ones. The other one allows you to navigate files, torrents. I'm sure that you are aware of it. Then you get a link, and then it adds the torrents to your torrent manager. And then the mail, too, is the typical URL that we all click on by mistake, and then it opens itself. Then your computer starts to slow down. So these are like really nuisance. And now something else that was much more exploitable than it looked like. And that was the wait for it, sit down before the computer and wait. Wait for it to restart, wait for someone to connect through UNC, and then you do like click, and then you are already into that device, or you just 
leaves some a way for someone to uh, connect itself through team viewer and leaving all the credentials right in the middle of the screen that didn't happen to me but well one way or another wait wait for someone to give something to you it's not a question of spending hours and hours before a kiosk but sometimes you are just walking around and then you come across these places okay and then yes well this was about well the yes the press condition right the knock of this uh, paper is so this presentation is to tell you or to share with you what I find around this man oh this is one of these carting places eh? when you go and drive a cart and I was there and I started to touch on the screen while I was waiting for to get there and then I found myself this and I said oh, I'm going to take a photo of this and then well I just uh, stopped touching the screen, but as I told you before, this is not about the how, but the meaning. This is not a critical device, did not have any entries or anything. It was interesting, had the webcam, it was appealing, uh, well, that was it. This is an ATM in Turkey, in Istanbul, more specifically. This is a fast photo that I take. I cannot remember much more. Something was going wrong. I said Windows XP with a numerical keyboard. And then around the uh, start button, there are thousand fingerprints. So this is also interesting. In this case, I think uh, the touch screen didn't work. I found many ATMs that give you an error message, then the application shuts down, and you have it there touch screen, full operation. So is there anyone responsible in here for this type of things? Please, if that happens, if anything happens beyond the legitimate application, please, please disable the screen because you walk around and you find something like that. This is what, and so, as I said, well, I will tell you later on, these devices have access to many places. Well, I spent, as I said, lots of time at airports. This terminal, I found it in Croatia. Airports, to validate your check-in. This one had a mouse, keyboard. Well, the screen on top, you cannot see it, but it had windows with an error on it. And what happened on the screen below is that well, we could see an interface that looks like nicely programmed nothing wrong apparently but it lets you visit the different websites for different airline companies so i started to search to play around some of them only had like one bubble with information but one of the of these boxes gave you access to the full website and then I found a URI that would allow me to take some external application. Well, once you have a Windows dialog, you are, you come out there fully. Well, you have nothing to do, but well, this is the command that I did. I took a photograph and then I closed it. That's another airport in France. I hate, I hate these devices charging people to euros to log on the internet for 30 minutes. I hate that. And then I started to play around and I could see that the interface was quite sound. Well, there is an experienced company behind it, but this is not like a pure a shitty application, not at all. And I could see that the only thing that this application let you open legitimately was a game, a really awful game. And then I wanted to open the game and then it opened a Chrome, nearly full screen one. And I said, okay, I will do the most brutal thing. File dot dot dash dash. Then I downloaded CMD to Chrome 
I opened it and then I got a line of commands and uh, you could I could do whatever I wanted to do. And the good thing about that was like, well, now I have a line of commands and we have exploit for Windows, a privilege of uh, escalation of privilege. Well, I don't know French, but look what it says. Intrater. Well, you have it all now. Administrator. Oh, that is in French. Administrator. Well, for some reason, the administrator, you know, just logs on every so often to change things, etc. Okay, so that is what happened with that actual device. Again, in France, you know, I was doing a stopover. And then I found is equipment in a box pay system, online game. This one I found it before the earlier than the other one again, Chrome. At the time I didn't have an internet connection because Wi Fi was a pay one. And I say I only want to watch to see gadget. Just let me access for ten minutes for free. And I said, okay. Let us see how it works, because I have lots of time to kill, so I will try to read the news and then I will just stop it. And then I was navigating through C, and then I found C, Squid, and I said, what is a Squid running in local? Six equipment, each of these equipment is running its own Squid. Then I went through the rules, I opened a command terminal because I am a power user of Windows. Well, Explorer Notepad could be okay, but I went to this. I edited it from here. I did the URL of the gadget, and then I just read the news easily, and that was it. That's the only thing that I expected from that equipment, to read the paper. The thing is that there were many devices of these kinds across these airports and also in other airports that I visited. You, with the terminal of the line of commands, you can restart the equipment or whatever. But some of them, look, they have a USB port. If you just, you can just inject the distro life if you want to. Me? Well, everyone knows that in my wallet, I have a minute USB with some tools just in case I need them. And then I said, no, I cannot really believe that this will work because the BIOS was completely clean for you to boost whatever you wanted to boost it. Well, let me see if I can show you. Can you see it to the right? Very small. That's my USB. Boosting a backtrack light. I didn't do more than that because I didn't want to get into trouble, but that I had a backtrack there. I could do whatever I wanted. This one is even better fun. This was a touch on touch screen. Bored person like myself at the airport, surrounded by Chinese people all rushing around, and me looking at the screen, touching on, changing the language. And I said, oh, I think I changed the language. And then when I changed the language, there was some lagging. Well, imagine someone like myself, you know, with my appearance, a tall guy, you know, before the screen doing like this. What happened? Because I could see that if you change the language really fast and ask the application to change tabs, there was some lagging, and I said, this is on Windows, it's going to crash, surely. I said, change language, change language, and then you see someone in the middle of an airport, you know, before a touch, on, touch screen doing like this, and actually when I turned back, when I found that, okay, I found that, crashing applications, and then because I was very close to the touch screen, then I got these blue lights, I said, oh gosh. And then I turned back, and I had like two Chinese people behind me <laughs> smiling. And then, well, yes, I could see that I was making myself too noticeable, and then, well, I just uh, moved somewhere else.
This is a company that does software for this type of touch screen, and they have a demon that lifted the application again. When I took that photograph, the application was lifting itself again. And then I had to do exactly the same thing. You know, some gymnastics opened the task administration to kill the devil before it lifted the application again. And then I had a command terminal to take my time, touch on the screen. And again, you know, look at the size of this screen. You can open a shell, you know, inject a bug, whatever. And then escalation of privileges. Again, administrator. A different one, again, calling me administrator. Well, this one, it's... Well, doesn't has lo doesn't have a lot to say about. Someone passed that on to me. I mentioned that to someone, and then they said, "Okay, well, this is a dialogue dialogue that you get in the beginning when you visit. Yeah, when you see and when you find an ATM restarting itself. I don't know whether they found this dialogue, but well, that's it. That's about it. I just wanted to show it. This one is critical, eh?" But, but there is not much more that I can show you about it. Well, this is shown with stars, asterisks, because I tricked it. I tweeted, I tweeted it last year at the rooted. This is an example of what you can do with iCAD. This was more a uh, laptop with a captive application. You go to iCAD. Then you install a Firefox, a Firefox extension, it launches or opens the terminal system for you. But this is, if it is a Linux not updated version, if I don't have a escalation of privileges, well, look what has happened. So, but this is for you to see what you can do with iCAD. Terminal which is closed. And I am sure, well, this is one one of the first ones that I found and that I like. You can see a TPV, well, for you to insert your card, your PIN number. This is a race condition because the people who did the application, well, this is my theory, but for them to avoid the voicing, that is to say that when you have a permanent image on a screen, you know, it gets burned. And then to prevent the ghosting, and I say, okay, we will implement our own safe screen. Why not? And then, well, uh, you have the black screen with the logo type, and I touched it to remove the safe screen, and then I could say flash. And I say, is that a start bar? And then I was there, you know, for 10 minutes waiting and not letting anyone come close to it and touch it because I was waiting it for it to trigger. I was just... And then it happens. Prize. Well, this is not an ATM, but it has a TPV. It has the software for the ticket selling. It has internet access. And that internet access is nearly free. And I left this one for the end, it's one that I liked a lot. And I was walking up Castellana Street last year, and I passed by a bank. I'm not going to tell you the name of the bank. It, now it's blinded. You cannot really see it. And I could see that the ATM was restarting itself. And then I just stayed before the ATM to see what, was, um, what would happen next. And then I could see also a flash. And then I touched the touch on the screen, like, really fast. I really hated it. You cannot really see it, but I just opened a, a Windows menu, you know, a touch screen on an ATM. Well, this is more delicate. Well, of course, to be taken into account. Well, I didn't leave all these devices. I left all devices as I found them, and I am serious. I didn't, well, it's not that I didn't, I don't want to break something just because of it. Okay, so this, as I said, the last one is the most uh, appealing or the one that I like the most anyway. So the idea is to take a look at four or five devices to find the four or five different flows and just 
attack them through there. Well, at airport networks, you find all type of devices, equipment, doing all type of things. SCADA devices, SCADA systems. Uh, these are all questions. I have. I haven't got the answer. Well, I'm sure you can find there are very many things there. But if you leave, I don't know, a device, a device that is sharing a network with other devices, well, that's what you find in terms of ticketing systems, information kiosks. I remember when I showed the ticketing system terminal or device to a friend, a friend said, OK, if you inject a, a, a bug and then you get free tickets and you sell them, you can do, you can get a lot out of it. And as I say, well, I don't break them. I leave them as they are. And then ATMs, these are the most interesting ones but by large because these are critical systems, not only because of the ATM, because of the network they are connected to. But I'm sure that some of you say, no, no, these, the networks of all the ATMs are isolated. It, yes, yes, of course. Summarizing, it, everything I showed you was easy. Didn't take uh, lots of time to do it on any of those devices. It is not that well. I devoted lots of time to it because, but in most of the cases, I didn't need any tools. I'm sure that there are some IVs that detail the plugins for high cards, etc. Some of the devices were critical. Some of these environments were just interesting. But when I see a TPV associated to a device, I'm not very happy about that. The environments, well, even if the environments are really interesting, even if the devices are not. So you may not have a shell in the information kiosk, but well, that you may want to scan the network, and that would be more interesting. And then most of them have um, quite free internet access. Well, at the end of the day, out of convenience, administration, or whatever, the devices out there are, well, basically quite, if not a lot, exposed. Well. And I said, OK, I'm going to test everything that I can. That's what I did. And then my friend said, oh, he's seeing another screen. And then I said, oh, wait for me for a second. And then I, you know, I start to touch on and to do things. Then second thing to do, stay legal. If you really feel like doing something like that, to me, it's a good idea you know, for you to have a feel to see what it is like. But at the end of the day, well, I've been system administrator myself. So if you are a system administrator, you don't like to find that, OK? So don't be careful, at least. And then in terms of getting hardcore on ATMs, if I, well, the capture that I get on the touch screen and the command line, I was kind of shaking. And I say, OK, 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 I shut, it, I shut everything down, and I leave it as it is. You know, people could get really angry at you if you do it like that. Then now I need to get authorization. I know that there are some people here working in the banking sector. I wish, or I would like, if someone is interested, I have ideas about entry vectors fully external for an ATM. I have some things in mind that I would like to test. I would like to test out new things, but with an authorization. I'm not going to take a chair and spend hours before an ATM waiting for you know, to break it. And then if I achieve that, I will come back to a rooted con, and I will share that with you. So I remember when I saw Vince in the first rooted, he gave his presentation and said how to come back to the rooted for free. Well, same here. If I get information for me, for my mind, for my brain, and then, well, you bring me to the rooted next here for free, I would be very happy. So thank you to all my team. I work with all those people on the screen. They teach me a lot. They put up with me a lot. I owe them a lot. And thank you to you all for listening to me. I know it's lunchtime and that you must be really hungry. Thank you for coming, and yeah, thank you, Roman. Bueno, eh... 
Unfortunately, rooted con people do not give talks at rooted con people. But no, Borja, now you are involved in a rooted con project, so you have a problem. Well, we'll try to find a fix for that or to fix it. Well, I had also issues with Raul Siles because he said, okay, you have to let Jose give a talk. Okay, we'll, 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 we'll see what to do with that. Well, also very important, u 2 hack is a very important event that is uh, ca ca that takes place in Paris. It is, registration is open, 28th and 29th of uh, June. Well, they, they, they also have ideas. They are thinking about doing things with ATM. So I encourage you to visit these people uh, and then to see how you can make it to Paris because it's a wonderful event. Omar has a good relationship with them, okay? So I encourage you to talk to them. So new to hack and KO teams are here. They are fighting it. Eh? So the coitum had the plots and honey pots, and the other ones are dosing them. So you don't know, but this is what they are doing: honey pig, and uh, they are mounting the honey pig, and it's not working. So do you have any questions? Okay, and if not, no questions. It's lunchtime. Oh, yes, there is one question. Very interesting. Congratulations. Question. You said that you accessed ATM. You told us that you could gain, well, access through the touch screen. Did, could, did you, uh, how far did you get? Did you get any further? No, I told you, I told you, I didn't try anything. I just wanted to see, for instance, if an evil was there, shutting that application. It often happens. It's a bit of a pain, but sometimes when you open an external window, and one second later, it, a devil shuts, shuts it down for you. So I just wanted to see whether I could open the window, and that's it. So ATMs, I didn't try to do more things. In other devices, as I told you, yes, I tried to do other things. Some of them have a VNC for administration. So and they have outputs and outlets in some areas, and others are free navigation. For instance, if I go to Explorer, I could reach, I don't know, Google or the website of RootedCon, and then as soon as I made it there, I closed it down. I didn't want to overdo it. So when you said that it had free internet action, is that what you mean? Did you get that on ATM? Did you see that on ATMs? No, when you said that, that an ATM had free internet action. I said most of these devices have free internet action. No, no, I didn't test that. I didn't try that out in ATMs. But I wouldn't be surprised that because of administration issues. Mm, yes, well, the ATM should be isolated, fully isolated, you know, but the only thing that you should have behind is just the banking points, but at the end of the day, I'm sure that someone has forgotten something over there. Hello for your presentation, inspirational one indeed. Well, uh, my question was uh, similar to the previous one. Haven't you ever felt the uh, impulse to send out a copy of the software and to do some research at home? No, I didn't do that. But when I saw that some devices had internet access, I just started to get like really excited. Well, what I did, the snippet, the code snippet that I did was not a malware. I did a Python request that it only did request to the outside. So I did a tool that allowed me, but when you lifted it, it was a standalone executable. When you lifted it, it connected to the web server that you told it only with a get request, took the command, commanded, and then I need another request to the outside. I did it to try it someday, sometime in another device. The thing is that I never did it. Again, I'm not going to do something which is wrong without authorization. If I'm here, I have, well, I just asked for that opportunity, for that authorization. If someone allows me to try these things, to test them, I'll do them. Not so far. Two 
two simple questions. Do you report to companies? No, I haven't, I haven't reported to anyone. As I said, well, I didn't find it meaningful or substantial enough to do it. I wouldn't mind to do it anyway. As I say, I want to test, to try out more. I am likely because I do pen testing myself and I'm appealed by that. And especially the ATM environments, you know, I have my head full of ideas for ATMs. You know, I sometimes I feel like, I don't know, I thought about, you know, bringing a chair with me, just sitting down before the ATM and then, you know, doing many, many, many things, many, many ideas has crossed my mind. But I haven't done any, I haven't carried out any of them. This is one of the reasons why I wanted to be here. I have many things in my head. If someone gives me the authorization to try them out, perfect. So buy an ATM yourself. You know what? Well, in the crowdfunding uh, project, okay, well, first he will do that crowdfunding project for him to buy an airplane, and then, well, with the remaining money, money that is left over, I will buy an ATM. Well, we will try to talk to financial entities, and then, well, we can put you in contact with them so that they give you protection so that, yeah, you are protected. Okay, here. Yeah. Many people moving around me, but I am the one who is sitting. Yes, but the audience says that it is interesting. Uh, well, do when you come close to these devices, are you wearing a cap so that they don't capture you on the bank's cameras? Look, this is one of the things that I didn't want to do. If I ever decide to do something uh, in an evil manner, I will do it, but I will not hide. You know, someone could really uh, tell me off or be angry at me with, from what I did. If someone tells me off, okay, well, I would just uh, admit it. But so far, and as I say, I'm not a mastermind. You know, I work with wonderful pen testers. You know, what, what it is very important are the ideas. Well, if I manage to do that, I am sure that if a serious person, a brilliant mind, decides to do it, is determined to do it, they say, well, I have 27 firewalls, 27 protections. If someone like that, you know, passes by, downloads the malware, and that's it. Where I live, you know, there is a banking, and it has a router with IP. You know, on the sticker, it shows on the sticker, and then the blind is up, okay? Yes, as uh, you know, like a character from a terror film said, I've seen things. <laughs>